in the Trans Perfect Music City Bowl. <coughs> the Wildcats, it will be school record seventh consecutive bowl appearance, all engineered uh, by our head coach, Mark Stoops. Uh, Wildcats have also now won seven games, at least seven games, in each of the last seven seasons, with the exception of the COVID-shortened 2020 season. Uh, it's one of the milestones this year, of course, we're coming off the uh, four straight Governor's Cup win. And for Coach Stoops, a couple of milestones this year. He uh, did complete his uh, 10th season, uh, making him the longest tenured uh, coach in Kentucky history. And, uh, of course, early in the season broke the, the school record for wins by coach and is now uh, up that to 66 wins uh, during his time at UK. And with that, we'll turn it over to Coach Stoops to talk about our Music City Bowl. Thanks, Tony. Uh, if you'd like, uh, you could continue to speak for a while because <laughs> oh, I got more. Yeah, you got more. I'll go right ahead because uh, no, not about the accolades. You can talk about players or team, but you guys are catching me in a vulnerable moment. I'm not gonna lie. My head is uh, has been spinning, and I'm not sure it stopped just yet. So I've been uh, been running pretty hard. I actually just ran out of a meeting and uh, come over here. So I'm I'm very very much for the first time I walked into this, but it's been 10 years, very, uh, uh, not one note and totally off the cuff today. So very unprepared. So you may catch me in a vulnerable moment, fire some questions at me. You may get a response that I don't normally give you, but uh, I will say this, and I mentioned it uh, briefly yesterday in a release. I'm very honored uh, to play in the Trans Perfect uh, Music City Bowl. I know it was a great experience uh, other than the outcome in 2017. Um, I know it puts our fans in, in a pickle, and uh, I'm very sorry about that. There's not a lot we can do about that, um, you know, for ourselves and for our team. Uh, it's an honor to play in this game. And again, I think some people may like it or not like it, uh, that we're a repeat uh, playing an Iowa team. But I know this, uh, that'll be a one heck of a football game once again. You know, a team that uh, is not going anywhere. You know, they're, they're always going to be there. They're going to fight you tooth and nail. Um, Kirk Ferentz is as steady as can be, uh, the longest tenured coach in college football, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, and uh, you know, just a, a very uh, quality program, and they have been for years. As you know, that's my alma mater. And so, uh, but with that being said, it is what it is. You know, but for us, it's an honor to play in that game. Again, the... Um, you know, the fact that our fans are a little bit torn. It worked in 17. I know the times were different. But uh, once again, this this year, um, uh, I expect Rupp to be packed for the Louisville game, and I expect us to uh, sell our allotment of tickets and have a quality uh, group of people there as well. There's enough Kentucky fans uh, to be able to uh, spread it around and support both programs like, like you always do. So thank you to the BBN and – BBN and, and look forward to it once again. Um, what else did I want to touch on in the opening statement? I'm sure I'll get to it. But, uh, but anyway, it's a busy time, uh, a lot of good things. Um, excited about this game. You know, as, as people discuss other options, the nice thing about this for us is the timing of it. Um, you know, anything on the 31st or later is ideal. Uh, to play a game earlier than that is is difficult sometimes with morale, as you know, in this day and age with players and timing. Uh, to ask them to get up Christmas morning and go to a practice may be a little tough right now. So, uh, you know, so anyway, it's it, this this timing of this should work out well. Uh, get get us time to recruit. We've been on the recruiting trail. We're hitting the recruiting trail hard once again for the next two weeks. We will work in practices around that and prepare, and uh, once again, our normal routine, it'll give us time to practice and prepare, give the players a little bit of a Christmas break, let them go home and see their families on Christmas, and then fly to the bull site and pick up where we left off and uh, get ready to put, go play a game. And, and again, uh, continue to try to continue uh, to, to go represent uh, our program the right way and go compete and fight and play a very good bowl game and try to win the thing. I'll open up for questions. Mark, where are well, you at on the offensive? Uh, I was fighting to have quarterback challenges. How much of an advantage do you think it will be for you guys if they don't want to come back? I, I really don't even know. I have not had time to even read one thing on the Hawks. You know what I mean? So I know this. Uh, doesn't matter who's playing behind center. doesn't matter what the score is. doesn't matter what's going on. It'll, it'll be a tough game. That's what I know. Go ahead, John. 
change? Just can you talk us through why you wanted to make a change on offense, and where are you in the search for it? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's many reasons. Uh, there's many factors that go into it, as you can imagine. Um, I'll be guarded in that out of respect uh, that I have for Rich and, uh, you know, all of our coaches. And, you know, I think he's a very good football coach that's very bright. And uh, sometimes things don't work out, and sometimes you need to make a change for a variety of reasons. Again, I don't want to throw one or two of those out there and have it grab a headline, you know. Uh, um, but, uh, you know, obviously I felt the change was needed or I would not have done it. And uh, I'm very excited about where this could lead. Um, I'm in the middle of talking to several people. I had a great conversation uh, with, the, with the potential candidate yesterday. Um, I'm going to meet with another one here this week. Um, I've already spoken to several others, and so I feel like there's some very good options out there, and I'm not going to limit myself. And uh, so we'll see where it goes. But uh, I'm optimistic. I'm excited. You know, I think even... Uh, you know, each time this, you know, position seems to open up, there's even more and more uh, interest in the job, which is a good sign to me. Is there a style you're looking for, or is it just the best person to pick that job? Yeah, I think, you know, there's definitely things to think about there. Yeah, I think, you know, one of the things, again, without talking negatively, negatively about anybody, but I said it, I think, post-game Louisville or one of these last press conferences we had, I definitely think, you know, taking that long to, to spit out play calls and, the, you know, the, some of that terminology with the NFL scheme I got to think about because, you know, running a, a, a play every 37, 38 seconds, you know, it's, I definitely want to look at that. Yes, I'm not, I'm not interested in going that, long, that slow, you know. Mark, you mentioned last year when you hired Rich that you hired Liam the first time, you, like, went by yourself, kind of just thought it over. Second time, it was kind of a group thing. This time, is it one way or the other, or is it meeting in the middle? How are you kind of handling that? Um, yeah, I, no, I, I always take input and calls, and there's a lot of people out there with a lot of knowledge and people I respect and fielding a lot of phone calls and vetting a lot of people. Um, but, no, I'll handle it uh, pretty much, you know, by myself for the most part. But, Part of hiring Liam two years ago was uh, the, the run game and how it suited your personnel. The personnel is different now, mm -hmm. so how, how does yeah. that change? It um, does. It does to some extent. You know, I think, you know, as I mentioned at that point in time, what what were we? We were a very physical football team. It was thrown where were we falling short, being able to, you know, benefit off that with the play-action game and, and the boot game and, uh, you know, play action pass game and all that. And uh, we did, up, you know, we did. And then, uh, you know, for a variety of reasons, you have to adjust to the personnel that you have. And so, yes, it is, it is a bit different right now. So, um, yes, I want, uh, I think, what everybody wants, and that's ultimately to score points. You know, I still believe and will, I don't know about always, but I mean, you know, it, it, you know balance is important. Being physical is important. You know, it's important to me. I think it's who we are. It's, you know, it's a, it's an identity, and, and I think it's important. But I also believe in getting the ball down the field and explosive plays, and that's something that I want to get better. I want to continue to improve, and I want to, uh, you know, create explosive plays. And, uh, you know, is that tempo? Is that, you know, run pass? You know, all that. You know, you put it together, and you just uh, you got to look at things and analyze things and – and always try to adapt and uh, ultimately hire the best uh, coach that fits us and um, somebody that has that ability to adapt, you know, not just be one thing or another, you know. And, uh, you know, so I think we have good pieces. I don't think we're as far off. I think that we got caught short in a couple spots this year, and I think, uh, you know, we need to address that and, uh, you know, and get back to work because we're not far off, you know, as – as bad as it all felt maybe to all of us at times and, you know, falling short of our goals, um, you know, you're still a few plays away from, you know, winning, winning two more, you know, and, uh, and so, you know, you got you to gotta look at those things. Do you hear also people of when you want to make that higher given how the transfer portal is and where the signing days come? We're, 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 gonna, we're holding court in the, in, the, in the transfer portal. I mean, I think um, there's no panic here. 
is there, you know, yeah, you, I think you got to be urgent, you know, you know, have some urgency about you, but no panic, you know, and not, I'm not going to rush things. It's, it's vital, you know, vitally important that we hire the right guy. You know, you have to get the right person, you know, rather than rush just to, to get one player or to, you know, to, to worry about that. We're, we're staying steady in, in recruiting. I think we're going to do well in the portal and, and, uh, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to panic there. I want to get the right guy. Or your next running backs coach? Um, a lot of things. Obviously, a dynamic person, a person that could handle the room and coach his position. You know, once again, just like as I talk about players, I mean, that talent level has to be there. That's first and foremost. Uh, but then I think, you know, personality matters. I think, uh, you know, bringing something else to it. Are you a dynamic recruiter? Do you bring something in special teams? You know, there's... There's several things that you could factor into it, and uh, I have uh, uh, great candidates that I talk to. I'm, uh, I don't know. I, I mean, you guys all seem to find out or whatever. I, I mean, you've been way off on some of this stuff, though, lately. I'll tell you this. You know what I mean? So you know, everybody thinks they got it down, and you know, sometimes you're way off. But uh, no, I have a, a person in mind I'm going to hire that'll be uh, coach running backs and special teams. Yeah, I, I'm very appreciative. I've always said that. You know, when you ask me those questions, you think about them. Uh, I don't spend any other time really thinking about that. You know, I, I'm very appreciative to be here. And as I mentioned before, I think sometimes it feels like it's gone so fast and other times slow. You know, sometimes good years, bad years. Weeks to weeks sometimes for us are so difficult, as you know. I think you, you've covered it enough that you see us that, you know, it's, it's a tough, hard, you know, very strenuous uh, season, and there's ups and downs. Um, so, um, you know, I think, you know, grateful for the opportunity and constantly driven to just try to get better. You know, that's really where the focus is, and that's what you really concentrate on. There's been so much to do, um, you know, since the last time we were together. Um, that, you know, you really just don't seem to stop. I had to stop for one day. I had rotator cuff surgery, so that kind of, that, that sucked. Uh, so that, but that put me down for almost 24 hours, which was, which was difficult. But, Mark, uh, but I bounced back quick. <laughs> Mark, we all know how difficult the conference is. You, you tell us that all the time. How important is it to get coaches who are familiar with, with the SEC? Um, I don't think it's difficult. I mean, coaching is coaching. I think a lot of coaches, um, if they have some experience in the SEC, great. Uh, otherwise, what power con power five conferences were they in, and what's their experience, and what's what's you know again, what are they bringing? You know, are they proven to be a recruiter? Are they you know proven to bring some experience in special teams or other areas and big picture ideas, you know, there's there's a different uh, value uh, for, for each and every coach. I mean, ultimately, we're trying to get the, the best coaches we can. Mark, do you know who's going to call offensive plays in the bowl game? Um, I don't want to comment on that just yet. You know, we're, we'll work through that. It'll be a, a group effort. You know, obviously, you got you got Woody up there, Scott Woodward. You got Vince, who's done it before, who would be a big part of the leadership of that. Uh, but, but Woody um, is, is – um, you know, been a quarterback, been a receiver guy, you know, and so uh, he'll he'll help a lot. Um, you know, more than likely will be active for the game will be uh, Josh Estesua, who's, um, you know, an analyst and been with me for a long, long time that is uh, overqualified for the position that he's in right now and ready to uh, be a quarterback coach and a play caller and things of that nature at, at, at somewhere. And so uh, fortunate to have him. Um, you know, Mark Perry is a guy that has great experience and, you know, been around and very valuable to myself. And he's been active uh, this past week with recruiting and being able to go to the state championship games and connecting with the, you know, state recruits and all that. So Mark is uh, good to have uh, active right now and be able to hit the pavement. He knows so many people in Kentucky. And so we have a plan to get to, oh, I want to say 60 or 70 schools in, in the state. Um, we already had that on the books, you know, and Mark's already been out and we've been out. And so, uh, you know, so I have some quality guys here. Do you know who's going to play in the bowl? No, I don't know exactly everybody that's going to play in the bowl. I mean, you know, it's different. Um, you know, last time we played, and I was so glad to do it, you know, with the portal, 
you know, and, and having guys play last year. This year, it's it's just different. You know, it's it's harder. It's 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 been around longer. You know, and we're a little more familiar with it. And last year was a great success. And but with this year, I think it's better for the players and better for us to, to go and take their visits and figure out where they're going. And um, you know, and just so appreciative of, of, of just if I could say it as a group with the with the guys that are in the portal, uh, just all. Great young men, very good football players. That we've worked hard to try to help them, and uh, it's not always a perfect or positive experience for everybody. But we work uh, very hard for everybody. You know, there's 110 players or whatever, 105 by the end of the year, whatever it is, and uh, we care about each and every one of them, invest in each and every one of them. But they're not all going to get individually what they all want, and so that's where the portal's a good thing. You know, and. Uh, it may not be best for us in certain areas, and but it's better for that young man, and so we support it and want to help him any way we can, and I really appreciate all of them. When juggling the portal and in-home visits, official visits, do, you, do portal players kind of get a similar treatment to the high school kids? Is it a similar process? It is. I think most um, you know portal players, when they come in the next time, you know, they're not interested in the bells and whistles. You know what I mean? It's more like get down to business. Where do I fit into your system? You know, where do you know, where where do you see me playing? You know, and and uh, you know, and so I think that's where it's different. You know, a lot of times, not not always. Uh, there's more and more as we get into this longer. But the portal players that have come in before, like, I'm not. You know, a lot of them are like, I'm not interested in all that. Like, yeah, fine, we'll eat some dinner, but I'm not interested in the in the bells and whistles. They're more interested in let's watch the offense, let's watch the defense, where am I fitting in, where am I playing, and, uh, you know, what the opportunities are. Mark, you said that it was a revolving door of meetings, of players making decisions about their mm -hmm. future. Uh, are you expecting more decisions to come out soon? Do you still have to have more meetings? Uh, I had meetings. I had meetings all morning. That's one of the reasons why I strategically made sure I was off the road on Monday, today, uh, because it was the announcement date. There's whatever, five, six players that you absolutely knew. We already had kind of those conversations and you might have a wrap up with them and thank them and support them. And, you know, but you knew, you know, you know, those are coming and uh, there'll be several more that, that we know are coming. And then you just don't want to be surprised. And to this point, I haven't been surprised. So I hope it stays that way. And so, um, you know, but I, I, as I tell the players, and I think you can all relate to this, is when you're dealing with uh, so many, uh, we have, there, there's some that I absolutely know are coming because I could just stand in front of the team. I could look out there, and as I talk to them every day, I know I, could, I read the eyes. And then there's others you don't know because we're not mind readers, you know. And that's the thing with players, and it's so important with coaching and coaches these days, and everything is that relationship piece and connecting with them and talking with them. And so we can get to know them as well as we can with such a big organization. And for me, that's still something that is hard and I still have to pour into and, and want to more and more and more because that's always been uh, important to me in uh, having that close personal relationship with 100 players and you know 50 people that work with you and everything else it, 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 it gets uh, gets to be a lot you know what I mean and so I try to uh, I think that's extremely important and that's why you have to have talented coaches with you. Mark is Will one of the players that you know whether he'll play or not in the bowl? I do not know. Uh, Will and I spoke, as I mentioned the last time I was public with you guys, that uh, he and I discussed it, and uh, he was going to think about it. He needed some time. You know, I didn't want him to make a decision right then because I'm sure he was physically, emotionally, and, you know, definitely the biggest thing is physically, you know, just had some things to work through. And I and, uh, wanted to see how his body responded, how he, how he felt, you know, with treatment and uh, and see where he's at injury-wise and, you know, and uh, – and so uh, we'll get together here, uh, I would imagine, uh, real soon here, and, and he'll, he'll let me know. And I'm sure not, not long after that, you all will know. Whether he plays or not, can you just talk about what he meant to the program yeah. and how he helps you if you do try to get a quarterback out of the program? Well, you know, he's a guy that, you know, and once again, it, it, it's hard to describe what he's meant to this program because he's meant an awful lot. He came at a time when we desperately needed him, you know, and he helped with, you know, to your point earlier about the strengths and, you know, who we were and everything. He helped kind of recreate that and attract some of these wide receivers and skilled players and, you know, and, and 
you know, we certainly wanted to adapt and get better, you know, at getting the ball down the field and passing and, you know, throwing, you know, building on the, on the play action game and all that. But, uh, you know, and then his leadership, you know, and as I mentioned to other transfers that come in, I mean, there's been quite a few going back all the way to Courtney Love with transfers that have come in that have been, been um, captains here, you know, and Will uh, coming in and being a two-time captain and having command of the locker room and command of this team in short order, uh, that's not always easy. And that says a lot about him. And he did it in such a way that's very respectful. Again, he's not one of those people that's going to just come in and try to overpower you with words. And it's more about how he goes about his business, how hard he works, and, and how authentic he is, and how he does lay it on the line. You know, and you could see it. If you can't see it, you're blind. You know, and he's very unselfish. And so there's so many qualities that I could talk about for him and what he's done that it's, you know, you could go on and on. Um, so we absolutely appreciate everything that he's done and, and uh, you know, and, and thank him for what he's done. And, you know, he will be a guy one way or another because if he doesn't play, it's really, you know, he's not, you know, he's got injuries. He's got things that he does got to get better, you know, that he needs to get in order. And, and he'll be right there with us coaching. You know what I mean? So he's not going to just take off and go to California, Arizona, or Florida to train. He wants to be with his team, you know, and he wants to help. So it tells you a lot about who he is. When looking for a potential next Will Levis, um, the order of operations, do you look for a quarterback before you get a coordinator? Does this new coordinator play a role? Like, Let me handle that. <laughs> <laughs> Can I play that card once in 10 years? Just let, just let, me, let me do my job. I, no, I ask everybody, it's seriously. I mean, I know everybody, it's important, and I appreciate the coverage and the interest and everything. I don't appreciate when people start speculating, throwing things out there and all that. You know what I mean? It's, it's fine. It's part of the gig to, you know, say it could be this guy, that guy, and that's fine. It's, it's all fair game. Um, but not when it's, you know, and it hasn't. But, you know, just, again, I just uh, I want to do, do my job. And after 10 years, I don't feel any heat or pressure, if you will, you know what I mean, from any, any outside source, whether it be a recruit, a current player, a media member, a fan, the loudest person on Twitter, does not affect me. Uh, I want to do what's right. Doesn't mean I'm perfect. I don't think I got it all figured out, but I need to do it the way I'm comfortable with and the way I, you know, it's been successful for me. Let me get the best person I can at the right time. Let me continue to work through it. I could promise you, I'm not, I'm not, you know, laying around. I had to. They, they zapped me up pretty good last Tuesday. Rotator cuffs, no fun. But I was back at work on Wednesday, so it was all right. Not on the rotator cuff, but that's yeah. uh, you know, it's not the first time you've made a change. What, what have you learned over the years about making that decision and making yeah. that hire? Yeah, I think. You know, that's hard to say exactly, John. Um, you know, I think with everything, and um, I don't want to say this in any demeaning way towards any coach that's ever worked for me, but with anything in life, and whether it's the players, whether it's football, whether it's X's and O's and everything, you know, there's going to be uh, good and bad, and there's going to be, you know, correct for you or not. It doesn't, again, I'm throwing no shade on anybody. I have the utmost respect for Rich and all the guys that have worked for me. Um, you know, but, and there's quite a few of them that, that, that I would hire back in a minute in a different situation. You know, most of them, all good people, good coaches. And, um, and so, um, you know, I think you learn from, I guess what I'm trying to say is you learn from all situations. And uh, I can't, that's a good question. I don't know if there's any one exact thing I could put my, my fingertip on, except other than, you know, you got to trust your instincts and you got to make sure you stay true to them and, you know, what's most important to you. You know what I mean? And to, in, in what I believe in this, in this current environment. And, uh, you know, again, I've probably used that quote before, but I mean, you know, General Patton, you know, was on to something. We talked about morale. You know what I mean? Morale is uh, is important. It's really important for us. And to stay 
constant and to go through the grind that we go through and, and mm-hmm. mentally, physically. You have to have good, talented people that are not only very smart X's and O's, but they have to be very good with young men, you know, and continue to, to let us develop them and let, let us bring them along. And that's like with the young players in our, you know, in our program and, you know, this portal thing, it, again, it's really good in a lot of ways. And, uh, but what you have to guard against, and it's the same thing I would tell my, my boys, you know, my kids, it's like, a lot of times it's like, you, you can't worry about others, you know? And sometimes it's like when you get a really good young player, then it's like, oh shit. I can't beat them, and I, you know, but as I tell my, my, my own kids, I'm like, no, no, no. Through all the years, it's like you worry about you. You know what I mean? Everybody thinks it's slotted. This guy to this guy to this guy. No, you need to worry about yourself and being absolutely the best version, the best player, the best person you could be, and that's the truth. Sometimes it comes very fast to some kids, and sometimes it, it comes in time. We've all seen the guys making it in the NFL and making all this money and having great careers that it took them several years to get to that point. And then some people see instant success and think it has to be that way. And that gets hard and discouraging for young people. And I'm talking even my own kids and everything. And my message to my boys is, is you worry about you. You know, I'll support you. I'll love you. I'll be there. You know, if you want to transfer, I might consider that, but it would have to be some very good reasons, you know, because they have to worry about grinding through. There's good and bad. There's obstacles. There's, there's things that happen in life that you have to learn to grind through, and you have to learn to persevere through. And then there's other times when it don't, and you have to go, and you have to move. And, like, we benefit from it. We've lost guys from it. I appreciate them all. I'm not here. I don't have the answer to it all. But I know you better really concentrate on yourself and, and your development and what you're doing and not worry about others. What issue actually Scott Satterfield taking the Cincinnati job? I just, just somebody popped that to me this morning, and I was like, what? <laughs> I didn't I didn't know, but I mean, I, I, I don't know him personally very well, you know, so I wish him the best, you know, and uh, I know they were, um, you know, a much better football team this year, and, you know, and so I know he was doing some really good things, and, you know, it won't be too far away, so I'm sure we'll cross paths again. And uh, I don't know everybody's situation or anything personally, so I don't want to comment other th- other than uh, I, I wish him the best, you know. And with competing against them, we've had a good, healthy, competitive, you know, you know, rivalry in uh, in game. So. If you're looking for a coordinator, are you looking for somebody who's already on the staff that's been successful, or are you looking for somebody who's currently out there looking to get somewhere? You always consider people with on, within your staff, but I don't have to talk to them or interview them. I know what they're capable of just after working with them side by side. So in this situation, um, I'm definitely I'm going outside. Yes. Mark, putting the transfer portal out of the equation as well as Will, it's kind of a two-part question. One, what do you think of the guys you've got in your quarterback room right now? And two, how important are these bowl practices in your ongoing evaluation? Yeah, I, I said that um, again. The last press conference was was, hey. Congratulations, Coach. How you doing, man? <laughs> so, look at that. Yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Keep it up. Yeah. Um, but uh, I said that the last time we got together um, was that we I felt like we had re- very good options on campus. And where we go from there, I don't know. You know, you. And again, you know, if, I tell our players this, so I'm not telling them anything they don't hear. I'm recruiting somebody to take their job, period. You know what I mean? I don't care how good they are. I love them, but I'm trying to get somebody better. You know what I mean? So that's no different. So don't take that out of context with quarterback. That's every player on our team. I'll tell them, I'm, take, I'm going to get somebody. Yeah, when I get on a plane later today, I'm going to find somebody to take your job. <laughs> trying. Right? Well, I'm just saying you want the best players you can get. I, I'm very confident in the, in the quarterbacks we have. I'm excited to see them. You know, in this bowl prep, I hope Will plays, but if he doesn't, it will open up an opportunity for others. And we'll see where it goes. And, and you know, and, and even players that are here and ones that maybe, you know, are talking about their role next year, and I tell them the same thing. Like, this is your role. This is what we, you know, if it's a player we believe in, they believe can be a starter and all those things, that's great. But I'm going on the road, and I'm going to take the best players I can get. Well, How hard is it to prep for a ball game when you don't know exactly who's going to be playing? 
Uh, not hard at all because we have a lot to do right now with recruiting. And then we come back and we'll have just a couple like light practices like next weekend. My normal schedule would be, um, if I could think of this after all those years, but we'll, we'll have to recruit all this week. Normally we pop back. We have the light practice Friday and Saturday last year, had meetings on Sunday, and we hit the road again. And then we came back and practice in some form or fashion Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday of the next week. And then I gave them a Christmas uh, a break for three days maybe or so and then meet at the bowl site. has been the normal schedule. Our player has been productive before showing that he can be productive. However, uh, maybe the right circumstances wasn't there for him to take the year to be productive. Can that player put cause him to fall back and can he reemerge? He has to reemerge, Lonnie. I mean, you have to, you know, and that's part, again, that's the life lessons, you know, like, yeah, there are some players that come in that, like, some players that have left, like, yeah, I, I didn't ask to leave. And this is the first, you know, I don't want to be de demeaning anybody. This, like, there are some players that are, like, good, valuable players that could potentially develop into something really good, you know, but um, they want to go somewhere and play right away because there's some talented guys maybe in front of them, and I get that. I support it, and I'm all for it. And then there's other, some youngsters that need to learn to, like, just worry about you, that, that, tangent I just went on. Just concentrate on you. You have a lot of ability. It's there. We believe in you. Just keep on developing. So yes, they absolutely could pull that out, but that's a big part mentally, and that goes to the point. That's the only thing about the portal that you have to guard against. Again, I could guard against it with my own children. It's like, don't think that you just walk out that door and go somewhere else, and it's just that easy. You know what I mean? You still have to worry about yourself. And how many of you, how many people in life just think, oh, just walk out, take a new job, walk out, hit the reset button, and boom, that's going to fix everything? No, that's not going to fix everything. And then other times it's very, very good, very important. Look at what, you know, look at other, other you know, scenarios that have happened, you know what I mean, with, with, with Burrow, with Will Levis, with guys where they, they get that opportunity and make the most of it, and it's good. So it's just hard to lump it all together. Craig's coming up here next. He could talk about his issues with it, but it's just different. It's a different world, you know, and... But that's my advice to the youngsters. Yes, they could come out of it. They just need to reapply themselves. Again, they got to have talented people and coaches around that can pull that up out of them. That's how we built this program. And we can't let the portal stop that. You know, you got to continue to develop guys and bring them along. You know, and that's still the core of who you are. I the last question. referring to this particular program, kids not going in the portal, but the, and the program now that have been productive. How many what, Mark? And, and playing about kids that are in the program now that haven't gone to work and not going to work. That haven't gone. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, that's the core of, you know, the guys that are on our program, in our program right now that are going to work, develop. And, you know, again, how many times have we sat here and you've heard me before say you're going to talk about guys next year we, don't, we, don't, we haven't talked about this year. That's going to happen for sure. Jeff, last question. Okay. We've had the December signing period for a while now, a few, few years now, but you throw the portal in the mix now too for your, your busy month. Any thoughts on just how that all sets up if, if there needs to be any tweak to... I got enough to think about. You know what I mean? I just I don't want to give you any... I don't want to give you a headline. I'm getting me burnt right now. You know what I mean? So I better just stop. I mean, it is what it is. You know I'm always like that. It is what it is. We're going to adapt. We're going to overcome. We're going to do the best we can. We're going to deal with it. And... Uh, I don't have any big picture ideas right now. I'm going to let Coach Skinner come up here. He's a, he, <laughs> talking to a national championship coach right here coming up, the defending. So uh, I'll let him talk. No, congratulations, Craig. Yeah, really, really, really good. For, happy for you. All right, yeah. well, thank you very All right, much. Thanks. Yep. Coach Skinner here momentarily.